I recently saw a post in my members only Facebook group from somebody who was worried that their husband might start drinking and lead them astray, derail their sobriety. And I wanted to share a little bit about why it's important not to make our own sobriety contingent on that of somebody else. So today we're looking at the importance of not placing our own sobriety in the hands of another person. That might be a partner or a friend that you used to drink with. It's really important to make sure that you look after number one. You're the only person on this journey who has control over your own sobriety. We have no control over how anybody else behaves or what anybody else does. And it's important not to allow the actions of others to have an influence on whether we make a choice to drink. One of the mantras that I choose to live by is to detach from what is not up to me. In other words, it's about noticing what is outside of my control. And believe me, when I looked at this closer, I realized that just about everything was outside of my control. Even my body was outside of my control. There are so many things that we just have no control over. And actually, when you boil it down, pretty much the only things we really have true control over are our thoughts and the way that we respond to them. Everything else, maybe we have some influence over it, but we definitely don't have control over it. You might think you have control over your money, control over your kids, control over your partner. The reality is we don't have control over any of those things. If you start to recognize that in fact, you only have true control over your thoughts and the way that you react to them, you actually make your own life a whole lot easier. And you start to notice when you're trying to control things, that you actually are unable to control and that that causes emotional suffering and it causes us pain. So if you find yourself in a position where you feel that somebody else drinking might start to threaten your sobriety, just bring it back to control and start to consider why you have a need to control that other person, why your sobriety has become contingent on how somebody else acts. This is about us learning to stand in our own space and to demonstrate that we have the power of choice in all of this. No matter what goes on around us, we can make that choice not to drink every single day. And absolutely, we should make that affirmation every single day. We should make it an intention every single day. But from a practical sense, I also understand that if somebody's quit drinking and their partner has also taken a break or quit as well, then it might feel really challenging if they suddenly decide to start drinking again. And I think it's important to equip yourself. Actually take some time to think about what that worst case scenario would look like and what tools you've got in your sober toolbox to navigate your way through it. You might stock up on alcohol-free drinks. You might also have an open and vulnerable conversation with your partner to say that, look, if you choose to drink, that's absolutely fine. But I'm absolutely certain and solid in my own choice not to drink. So I won't be drinking with you and please don't ask me to drink because I've made this choice and I want to live an alcohol-free lifestyle. I think becoming open and really vulnerable is important. I think doing what you can ahead of time is really important while staying in control of only what you can control. Of course, we can ask our partners to do things, but it doesn't mean that we're going to get what we ask for. And it's important to understand that as we go into any conversation. It's just important to set out where we stand in the situation. And equally, thinking about any boundaries that need to be set. When I quit drinking, red wine was my go-to drink. And I respectfully asked my partner if she would mind no longer drinking red wine. I said, I don't mind if you drink white wine or Prosecco, the drinks that I'm really not interested in, but please can you not drink red wine? Now I asked her knowing that she might not say yes. Thankfully she did say yes and that really really helped me on my journey but had I not said anything at all I might have set myself up for a more challenging environment within my home. So rather than becoming emotional and then projecting your anger or resentment or frustration onto your partner think more about what you need. If they were to drink what would you need to maintain your alcohol free lifestyle? Maybe it's something you need from them or maybe it's something you need from you. 
another way of meeting your needs. Maybe you need to be getting more connection, socialising a little bit more, meeting friends for coffee, doing something that really makes you feel good about yourself and brings joy into your life. My sense is that you need to spend some time looking at meeting your needs and not relying on your needs being met by other people. Yes, it's great when you quit drinking with your partner, but making your sobriety contingent on somebody else is risky. It runs the risk of your sobriety being derailed through no choice of your own. And it's far more important to know that this is your decision you have that choice every day and you can make that intention your own every single day. So think about how you can set yourself up for success, what you really, really need, what do you need every day in order to meet your own needs. Think about that closely and think about having a vulnerable and open conversation with your partner. And I think you'll suddenly find that everything starts to shift in a positive direction. Now there's a video next to me that talks more about alcohol and our most important relationships. You can click on it now and watch it straight away. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'd love you to be part of this community and I'll see you again on the next video very, very soon.